So we're just continually started coming out. And then once that happened, I thought there's not going to be any talking to him. So I'm there's not going to be any talking. So what did you go to the police for? You go to the courthouse the next day and take out a summons. What the, did you go to the police for? The only way I could go to the courthouse and get a summons, ma'am, was to have his name. I, I didn't have his name. And he was not going to give me his name. So just a second. Well, <laughs> that's a different story. If you went to the police department and said, this is the address, I have to serve a summons, could you look up on your records and tell me the last name of the person who lives there because I want to serve with a summons. That's something entirely different than going to the police and reporting an incident that involves him. I did do the incident with his his verbal oh, all that the was that F sort words of that, that sort of outrageous conduct. He had also told me that I would need to bring somebody back with me, and I said, "Look, I'm not trying to fight with you. I just want to get this resolved." Why don't you just go to the courthouse and if you believe that he is in the wrong and responsible for your scooter, sue him, which is eventually what you did. I thought I had to have his name in order to do that, ma'am. When you thought you had to have his name, did you ultimately find out that you knew where he lived? You you could actually get that information by going to town hall and looking up who lives in that residence. No, I didn't. Well, okay. Did the police leave? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, and you finally got served with the summons? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ma'am, can I show you the picture of the collar that the Great Dane wears? No, it's not necessary. Running? It's not necessary. To yeah. Listen to me. You started this case, Miss Huddle, by telling me oh, that. Okay. His dog, because it was yapping nonstop, caused an incident with your dogs. What caused an incident with your dogs is that the big dog got flustered by the yapping of a smaller dog, just like it could have gotten unraveled by the honking of a horn and took off, causing you to lose control. I mean, the contraption that you were riding on is destined for trouble. You have a huge dog, a Great Dane, that weighs how much? 140 pounds, 150 pounds? Question, 140 pounds, 150 pounds? About 106 pounds, ma'am. Okay, and the other dog weighs half the amount. So you're sitting in the middle of a scooter. On one side of the scooter, you have a dog running that weighs twice as much as the dog on the other side. That's clear, because the Great Dane is running, and you're trying to get the little 40-pound dog. Come on, come on, let's go. Good girl. That's what you were saying. So you are in a position. It could happen with a child running out into the street. It could happen with a car honking. It could happen with anything. Ma'am, the reason okay. the dog took off was because his dog ran into the street and followed my dog. I listen to I me. Also listen to me. Video I don't know that will show you that how my dog reacts to dogs barking when they I are in their yards and we're then, riding. Listen to me. I don't care. If you know how your dog reacts to dogs barking, don't take your dog out on the scooter. She never reacts to Goodbye. dogs Goodbye, we're barking. done. You have no case. <laughs> Dismissed. Thank you. Parties are excused, you may step out. Well, I seen that both leashes was on the scooter. I didn't see any leash in her hand. The leash is secured to the scooter. There is no way possible that my little Shih Tzu Poodle, you know, could have scared this huge Great Dane. And the scooter is 70 pounds, I'm 150. There's no way that dog's gonna pull that scooter over like it did. No, no, I mean, I definitely feel like accidents just happen. Uh, I think that it was negligence on the plaintiff's behalf, though. I hope I can continue can go ahead and continue on the route we normally take without getting any type of reaction or harassment.